Okay, hello and welcome to module four, lesson 11, talking about constant rates today. Um, we are gonna start here on page 40 with example one. I'm not gonna do all of the examples and exercises for the sake of the video, um, but I'll, I'll try and go through one so that everybody is aware of at least one or two examples of what we're going to expect for homework in the next few days. Okay, so starting with um, page 40, example one, uh, it says Pauline mows a lawn at a constant rate. Suppose she mows a 35 square foot lawn in 2.5 minutes. What area in square feet can she mow in 10 minutes, in T minutes? Um, so what we're looking at here is we are trying to figure out, um, first of all, our rate of change, our constant rate, and that is coming from usually our first um, two pieces of, of numerical information. So we've got she mows 35 square feet in 2.5 minutes. And so we want that to be in a fraction form. And then it says what area in square feet can she mow in 10 minutes? Okay, so um, let's start by answering that. So if we set that equal to another fraction here, another ratio, um, we have this other piece of information, 10 minutes. Well, that's going to have to go at the bottom of this fraction here because we started with minutes at the bottom and there, it's at the bottom here. Um, and so we want to know how many square feet. So what area? We're going to say A for square feet goes up here. Okay, and then we saw in the past that we can write linear equations this way by doing cross multiplication. So if we cross multiply 2.5 with A, 2.5A is then equal to, if we multiply 10 and 35, we get 350. And then we can then divide by whatever number is next to our variable, in this case 2.5, to get rid of it, and divide over here to figure out our square footage that um, she can mow in that time. So 350 divided by 2.5 gives us 140 square feet. Now, it also asks us to answer the question, so that was our question for 10 minutes. It also asks us to answer for T minutes, and that's actually a separate question. Um, so for T minutes, you would set it up the same way, starting with your rate of change, 35 square feet in 2.5 minutes. And then you would want that to be equal to another ratio. In this case, we have T minutes, but we still are asking the same question, what area? We don't know that, so we have to use a variable. I'm gonna use A again. And in this case, you can't actually solve to get a final number because we have two variables in our proportion. So um, all they're looking for for this part is for you to set it up so you can see um, the general format. Now, going down to the next part, you're going to be asked um, probably until the end of this chapter to be filling out tables and graphs that go with our different stuff. So if you look at your table, um, the first thing that I notice is that there's nothing filled in here. So T, time in minutes. Um, you can really come up with any numbers to go in there. I always like to, if there's a graph, look at the graph to get some numbers to start with. So um, the graph starts at zero, and then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm just going to go zero, one, two, three, four there. Now the middle wants a linear equation. Um, so up here, we actually made a linear equation without really discussing it. Um, but remember, in the last lesson, I told you, if you've got a rate of change, you can make a linear equation by doing this. We're going to say y equals, and then every, the first thing that you put on there is going to be your rate of change. In our case, ours was 35 square
square feet in 2.5 minutes. So I'm going to use a parenthesis, 35 over 2.5, okay? And then you multiply that by x. Um, and so when you type this in your calculator, you either you want to make sure that you're using parentheses. Um, some of you realize that um, if you divide that out, you're going to get a number. Um, so yes, you can change it that way. I'm leaving it as a fraction because later when we start talking about graphing these, um, it will be helpful to leave it as a fraction. So let's fill out our table. The way we do this now is you want to say, okay, if t is 0, oh, I should have made this t probably, but we're going to call it x. So we're going to say this is x. y equals, and then we're going to put, type in our calculator, 35 over 2.5 times 0. That's what we want to put in there. And if you type that all in, or if you just know anything multiplied by 0 is 0, then we're going to do y equals 35 over 2.5 times 1. Okay, and if you type that in your calculator, you want to type it in just as you see it. So parentheses 35 divided by 2.5, and parentheses, that's important times 1. We know that's going to end up being the same, but you get 14. Okay? And then for 2, you do the same thing. y equals your fraction times 2. And I didn't write it in there because I'm running out of space. But if you type the fraction and you multiply it by 2, you're going to get 28. And then same thing here. y equals your fraction in parentheses times 3. And you're going to end up getting 28, 30, 42. And then same thing here. y equals your fraction times 4. Okay? And then you're going to get 56. And then your chart is filled up. Now, here's, here's what, how you can check to see if you did this correctly. Um, finding the difference between each one, how do you get from 0 to 14? You add 14. How do you get from 14 to 28? You'd add 14. 28 to 42, add 14. 42 to 56, add 14. Um, and that should be the same every single time because we're talking about a linear equation. If it's not the same every time, you probably did something incorrect and you need to go back and check. The other thing um, that I want you to notice, if you do 35 and divide that by 2.5, that's equal to 14. So this and this should be the same, hence the word rate of change or constant rate. Um, now, the last thing that's going to be asked of you is to put it on the graph, okay? So the points you're putting on the graph, don't forget, um, are going to be the one to the, here's your x value and here's your y. So we're going to start at 0, 0, and then 1, 14. And notice 14 is not marked, so you're going to have to estimate 228, again, estimating 342, excuse me, um, and then 456. And you should notice something about your dots. Again, going back to this word linear, they should land in a straight line. If you're, gra if you're doing a linear equation and they don't land in a straight line, that means probably something went wrong. Um, also, if it's a linear equation, we want to draw our line through our dots because in this case, we're talking about someone mowing a lawn. Um, so she doesn't just mow a lawn at one minute and then stop, and then at two minutes and then stop. She mows constantly from zero all the way through to five minutes in this case, and she'll keep going. She doesn't mow and then stop and then mow and then stop. She keeps mowing that lawn. Okay, and this is the gist of what's happening in this entire lesson. Um, and the only thing that's going to change there is your rate of change and, and kind of the idea behind each of the story problems. But they all are in a similar fashion where you're going to want to figure out a proportion, you want to figure out a linear equation, plug that into a table, and then graph. Um, there are tons of examples 
in here and actually the the problem set the homework doesn't actually start all the way until page 46 right here um, and for the sake of time on this video I'm just gonna get us started on this so you know what this is asking you to do okay so starting with problem one it says a train travels at a constant rate of 45 miles per hour and it doesn't ask you to do anything there but my advice is to write your rate of change or your constant rate out as a fraction to start off so in this case we're looking for a fraction 45 miles 4.5 45 miles goes on the top of the fraction and now that's the only number given so in some of these there's a hidden number per hour is per one hour so the number one they're not gonna say it but so one hour goes at the bottom so here's our rate of change or our constant rate right here then you can use that to answer your next questions what is the distance D in miles that the train travels in T hours. That means that it's looking for you to set up our proportion again. So we're going to start with our 45 miles over one hour and we're going to set that equal then to um, another ratio and we're going to insert our variables. So distance D in miles has to go at the top because it has to match with miles here. And then T hours goes at the bottom because hours have to match with hours. And you can't solve that yet because you have too many variables. You have a D and a T. You can't have more than one to be able to solve. Okay, but now when you get to part B, how many miles will it travel in 2.5 hours? Now you're gonna use your proportion and you're gonna um, insert this 2.5 hours okay so we're gonna have 45 miles over one hour is equal to and here's our other side sorry that's kind of running into each other is equal to um, 2.5 hours has to match with hours so that has to go at the bottom and then we'll put D as our variable at the top and then you cross multiply these 1 times D so 1 D is equal to 45 times 2.5 so in your calculator make sure you type that in correctly 45 times 2.5 that's 112.5 oopsies 112.5 and then technically you then or divide by one on each side but we know that that's gonna um, result in the same answer so for part B I'm sorry I'm running out of space but D your distance is 112.5 miles okay and the rest of it is much of the same thing except for at the bottom you're gonna have to fill out a table and a graph so if you have further questions, please come and see me either before school or at lunch, um, and I will gladly help you further on this. Okay, so um, again, homework today was page 46, and it does keep going beyond that. Number five is not on page 46, but numbers one through five.